Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey and you are here. Uh, <laughs> what's going on? Um, you are here, the Window Cleaning Podcast, WCR Nation. Uh, if it's your first time checking us out, <laughs> I don't know why I'm making noises, but uh, thanks for checking us out. It's not always this weird, I swear. But uh, uh, we're available here on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, all of those platforms, and of course, YouTube, where all of our commenting goes back and forth. Um, thanks for checking us out. Make sure to go ahead and thumbs up the video if you're on YouTube. Uh, just for everyone, congrats. Uh, our last video uh, in the week got 51 uh, thumbs up. The last I checked. So can we do 60? Can we get it to 60 thumbs up on this video right here? Huh? Maybe? Thumbs up if you're watching on YouTube right now in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thumbs up. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate that. Uh, if you are one of the elite, one of the cool kids, and you are somebody who watches the show every week or listens, podcasts are hugely, hugely pop popular, making money while you're listening, uh, and most importantly, you order your window cleaning and pressure washing supplies from me, then thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it is because of you that I eat two packs of ramen in a day. Uh, so thanks very much for that. That is how I kind of make my cheddar. So it's like a virtual high five. So really, guys, I appreciate it. I always say this, but uh, genuinely, uh, the people out there who are my clients uh, are epic. They are absolutely amazing. I get people all the time who just like send me a text or an email and be like, hey, it's in my cart, man. Put the order in. It costs you nothing more to do that. And I get credit for that. That's uh, amazing that you guys take the time up for that. I truly, truly appreciate that. Um, and um, yeah, if you want to be one of my clients, my number direct is 862-312-2026. Uh, I don't care if it's a big order, a little order. It doesn't matter. It all adds up. And uh, it all allows me to beat John in the competitions. Uh, John Lee is the man. Um but thank you. You can also text that number. It's my cell phone. So uh, this week, I want to give shout outs to first and foremost, Fluff Daddy. I could I could literally um, thank Fluff every single week because he's always commenting. He always comments. It's awesome. He is uh, one of my uh, favorite people in all the world. Uh, super, super cool dude. And if you haven't checked out his YouTube channel, go to it. Search Fluff Daddy Cleans. And uh, you'll find it. It's awesome and epic. And uh, he's going to probably comment on the vi this video. So that's amazing. Um, thanks to Fluff for always commenting and checking it out. Thanks to David and Nicole Rodriguez. Um, I think I, I email back and forth. So I don't know which one of you I'm always talking to. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're one of the elite, epic, awesome people. Uh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Every time I see your name come across, uh, Ryan Glass, thanks to you too for just being so active and uh, uh, let me help you in any ways I can. So, thanks to you. Now, winner, winner, chicken dinner this week. So, we real quick, we use a generator for this, it pulls up all the comments and pops up automatically. And if it's somebody that's won, we go and regenerate it. Uh, but this week, the first one to be picked. Like the automatic, it was uh, Kevin. Kevin Fennis. Kevin, you finally won, man. So that is awesome. All you got to do is email me your info, josh at window cleaning resource. We'll get that out. Now, what did he win? He won a swag bag, which we are almost out of the swag bags. But uh, swag bag and a $50 credit to window cleaning resource. So if you want to win, all you got to do is comment on the video here, YouTube, if you're watching it. And... Uh, it gets you a potential to win. So anyway, this week we're talking about the top five business mistakes. Now, uh, Luke, the window cleaner, you've heard of Luke, the window cleaner. Um, he did top five mistakes for newbies. And I saw that. I'm like, Man, it's a great idea. Uh, that was a few months back. But I thought, well, on my side of it, I don't want to talk. I still don't talk about the actual, hey, here's how to clean a window. I try not to. Which, by the way, if you guys are listening and people talking to me all the time about it, this is week 72, I want to say, 72 straight weeks of a 30-minute podcast about window cleaning business, uh, I run out of ideas. Like It's hard to keep thinking of things that are interesting enough. Like, what's the best squeegee? I could talk about that, but do you want to listen to me talk about squeegees? 
for 30 minutes? No. It's, it's very hard. So if you guys got ideas, comment. Again, YouTube is our platform. We go back and forth with comments. Make sure to thumbs up on YouTube, but comment down there if you have any show ideas. Literally love them. Some of them uh, I have uh, sent across that I can't really do a 30-minute podcast, but I love it. It really opens my brain to help me think of other things. But I thought, well, what the heck? Let's do a top five series, right, about top five business mistakes because – Again, we're the business side of things. When you're listening to WCR Nation, uh, you're thinking and, and getting in the mindset of the business side of having a business, service business. It could be window cleaning, pressure washing, dog poop removal, whatever. So let's talk about that. The top five business mistakes. Now, these are in order of what I think is the most important um Compared to the other ones, this may not be yours. Uh, I love uh, if you have other mistakes, go ahead and comment on it if you're watching on YouTube. But number five is slacking on the office work. Now, the office side, as you probably hear that my phone is ringing, but the office side of it um, is the hardest for a lot of people. Like The office side, you either love office work and that's kind of a thing that you dig or you hate office work. Me personally... Stuffing envelopes and invoicing and all that is awful. So I just got a, 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 a my office goddess, I call her, that uh, comes in and does all that work. But somebody's got to do it. And if you're an owner operator or you don't have somebody in place or it hasn't been allocated to somebody, you have to do it. If you miss the business side, the office side of things, you're going to miss out on a lot of the big, 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 big things that continuing to grow this business, let it roll, making it healthy and getting paid. So Number five, slacking on the office work. And what do I mean? First off, get paid, right? Uh, tracking your collections is huge. If you're not tracking collections, right, and you don't know who owes you money, and you're not calling those people every day, every two days to get that money, you're leaving money on the table. I got guys, and I was, I was guilty of this for a very long time until uh, we kind of changed our policy, if you will. But I know guys who have... They're going into winter right now, and they have fourteen, fifteen thousand on the books of unpaid work. You guys probably have more. Comment down below. Uh, brag about your uh, uh, money that's owed to you. But uh, it, look at these numbers. If you're on YouTube, check it out. That look at the numbers that people are posting. There are huge, huge dollar amounts. Now, if you make fifty thousand dollars a year, so owner operator and you have even 5000 in unpaid bills that's 10% of your entire yearly that's still owed to you right so you have to stay on collections how just make sure that you're pulling up if you're using quickbooks i love quickbooks but customer factor or any of these other ones go in and just um, see who owes you money and go with it you know you have to call and be on top of these people don't go well i don't want to annoy them they owe you money annoy the piss out of them that's how you're going to get your money is doing that but you need to know who owes you money daily to be able to collect it make sure you do that and change the way you're doing things if you have a big uh money owed then go in and actually uh change the way that you're doing things and uh require money down right away that is uh a part to get some of it the other thing is to always get money before you leave now that's a hard one to do but once you implement it if somebody says they're not there then say, oh, no problem, then I'll just need to get paid before we do the job. I, I, you know, I can't leave the property until I get paid. Do that, and you're going to save a lot of work in the back end. Remember, I pay someone to do that kind of thing for me when I'm losing money that way. Well, you could just do it yourself in the first place and save a bunch of money. Another one is stuffing envelopes. Stay in the mindset that that envelope you give them, if you're on the envelope system, which is invoice, and then all the goodies inside the envelope that you hand them, they have to open it. Why you get a bill for every other company ever and there's ads in there is because you have to open your bill. It's not junk mail. You have to open it. It's great to tell people about all their services, and, and that's what we do. We do third pages. Uh, we slip them in, whatever we're trying to push at that time, putting them in there. I also put the gear, uh, the uh, satisfaction form in there, right? Just a couple quick questions. You know, how'd you like our service? What would you rate us? Five bubbles, just kind of see. And then a spot for notes in the bottom, right? Um, putting everything in there. If you're doing the business uh, or the credit card, gift card, plastic gift card thing, 
Put that in there. Stuff those envelopes and make sure they're ready every day before you do the next work. You're missing out on a huge opportunity if you let this go to the wayside. Stuffing envelopes works. So do that. Uh, and then uh, lastly, fast estimates and um, recording estimates is another big one. I talked to somebody just about now, now maybe two weeks ago, and we were talking about estimates. He goes, I, I, you know, they call, I look at it online, just like, you know, a lot of people and I bid it to them. I said, oh, cool. So when they call you back, then what do you, how do you know what you told them? I, I mean, I just look at it and go, oh yeah, I remember that one. You can't do business that way. What you have to do is have a, I had, you don't have to do this. I'm just a guy. I don't know any better than you. It's your business. You can't be wrong. Right, there we go, all out of the way. But what I do is have a, like a zip-up uh, bindery thing with a notebook in there, and it's my estimates log. Um, and actually, we switched that over to binders now. Uh, but those binders, you open it up, and that page is in there, and it has date, name, uh, address, uh, phone number, email if uh, uh, you put it on there, and then the bid, uh, and, and then like a notes bid section. When I know that, when when Sue Johnson calls me back, you know, a month later and goes, oh, hey, we decided, sorry, I'm out of town, oh, la, 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 la. we want to go ahead with it. You don't just go, oh, okay, give me your address. I go, oh, cool, Sue, hold on one second, let me pull you back up. Pull it up, I see everything right there with the notes. Oh, yeah, it looks like uh, your dogs go to the vet on Tuesday or the groomers or dog daycare on Tuesdays. Let's go ahead and schedule that. I know everything. I know it, and I know the price because here's the other thing. People lie. They're going to try to get you to get it for cheap. Don't let them do that. Record your estimates and make sure to do fast estimates. Don't leave those estimates until Friday. I do all my estimates on Friday. You're going to lose the people that have already talked to somebody else. Man, don't lose that. Number four in the top five business mistakes for window cleaners and pressure washers is keeping up with equipment. Now, this was going to be like an honorable mention because you know that I'm a salesman for window cleaning resource. So don't let me like, this is not me trying to do a sales pitch. I tried dang hard to not ever be salesy. Hey, if you've dealt with me, you know, uh, I'll give you the truth every time. I'm not a salesy person. But uh, especially in the nations, I don't want to be salesy. So take this all with a grain of salt. But here's what it is. Keeping up with your equipment, first and foremost, means cleaning your truck. Cleaning your equipment. If you walk into a job and your rags look like ripped up garbagey rags and your your uh, belt and your bucket on a belt and all that stuff is just junk, you look dirty. Okay? You look bad. You need to have that fixed. You need to keep up with that. Clean that. If you show up and your your water fed system is is duct taped and and you know there are products out there that I'm not going to mention because we don't sell them that uh, you there's more duct tape than there is actual product. You just if you have that it looks like crap and then people are going oh god why am I paying this guy two hundred dollars I could pay somebody else two hundred bucks to come and they'd have good stuff. Keeping up with your equipment is huge. Looking nice, keeping up with your apparel. If your shirt is ripped or stained. Yes, they're going to get stained. Replace the dang thing. Have You don't have to do this, but what I do is I have, again, our store has the size of shirts. Everything is in there. If you have a shirt and it looks like junk, it's faded, it's gross, grab a new shirt. They're like six bucks. Grab a new shirt. They're screen printed. And, uh, you know, don't text me and say, where do you get your shirts? Because it's local. Like, just look up embroidery screen printing in your area and you're going to find it. Um, you know, Get new shirts, stay clean, look like you're there to clean things. Looking presentable is just a part of the image for the whole thing. And then finally is cleaning your truck. Like the outside of your truck should look clean, not rusted and dirty and it hasn't been through a car wash in a billion years. The inside of it, you shouldn't be driving a dumpster. You know, you shouldn't open it up or the windshield be covered in crap on the inside and McDonald's, that's just gross. Like I, I cringe every time I see just a Filthy dirt bag getting out of a dumpster truck, stuff falling over, opens the door and there's cans falling. Like that is just, that is awful. Like you don't have to be rich or poor or, or smart or dumb to do that. That is an absolute free thing to throw some stuff away and just keep up with it. Run a vacuum in there every now and then, you know, run it through the car wash, hose it off, brush it down, whatever. Keep up with your equipment. It's part of your image. And your image is everything. Keep that all in mind. Number three is legalities. So uh, legality side of things 
is weird. Depending on where you are in your structure of business, how far along you are, that really depends on where your legalities are. There's a lot of different things that a million dollar company is different than an owner operator, right? So these don't really cover for everybody, but look at what's in your side. These are the things that are easily missed, but they're super important. First off is insurance. Guys will ask, you know, jump on the forums and see, like, hey, I've been window cleaning for six months. When is the time to buy insurance? Six months and one day ago. You should have insurance to do this. Why? The guy's name was Duncan. I don't know. That was just a screen name. This is when I first started. I remember this was the biggest shock for me. This guy scratched some glass. No insurance, of course. $60,000. The guy just started a business. He was awesome. He's gone. Disappeared. Now, did he quit, file bankruptcy? I don't know. I don't know. But stuff like that happens. If you have insurance, the insurance coverage is there. Not just for the, the well... You know, I don't use ladders. They're not going to fall over and hit someone. Okay, what about scratching glass or or breaking something that's way out of the budget for what you have or just stupid things? Insurance coverage is the cheapest thing that you can offer to just have peace of mind. No, there's not one company that's a legit company that doesn't have insurance. Like, if you're an office building, you have insurance in case somebody slips and falls in the parking Like insurance is there it's a necessary evil insurance sucks but get insured like do it right now if you if that's one thing that you pick from this one and you don't have insurance do it workers comp is another one it's a different type of insurance but an employee can screw you very very hard if you don't have the right things in place it, it absolutely can and having workers comp is a big one now you say well workers comp is expensive okay it's more expensive than uh, an employee falling and then claiming negligence or whatever. And, and you know, you're just not covered on the workers' comp side of things. Uh, yeah, that, that, that could screw you even more. Not to mention that you need to have it for state. Or I try not to get specific states, but that's a big one is workers' comp. If you don't and can't afford workers' comp or don't want to pay that, A, raise your prices. What are you doing? But B, uh, go into the temp agency. We talked about this employment through staffing agencies. You hire your own people. They come and do the paperwork. They go into their workers' comp pool, and it's cheap. It's, uh, again, numbers are different everywhere. 38% is what you're paying for an employee to run them through a agency that takes care of all that. That's part of your workers' comp is in that, plus your medical care, uh, your 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 benefits you may offer, possibly paid time off, you know, and there may be sick time and vacation time. All that and all the tax and other things are all in that. I don't talk about taxes here. I hate that word. So uh, the last one's payroll. Let's just jump right into it. That That is the employment agency. You do that. Workers' comp is rolled into that. Their employment benefits are all work it rolled into that. And you pay like one batch of payments basically for that. <laughs> Just do it. Just those are un those are unfun and they're going to be the most expensive things that you uh, have, but they're going to be some of the most important things. So get uh, all that workers' comp insurance and, and get people on payroll. If you're paying people with a check. They will screw you. And then you'll have to pay all the back stuff back to the government when they find out because your employee got butt hurt because they got fired or let go or you're slow or whatever. Now all of a sudden the government comes in and says, oh, you've had this employee for two years and you haven't paid anything. Now you owe us $13,000. And then, of course, there's fees and penalties of another $13,000. You owe us $26,000 all because you didn't put someone on payroll in the first place. It just doesn't make sense be a real business, right? Number two in the top five business mistakes for window cleaners and pressure washers is not focusing on the existing customer. What do you mean? I advertise all the time. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is advertising other services, using the envelope system, right? Sending your customers emails, not being annoying, but sending them emails, sending them postcards completely different and separate from what you are. They already trust you. In business, absolute fact is that trust is the hardest thing for you to accomplish in a customer, but it is 100% the most, the strongest driving factor for somebody to hire you. When they trust you, you're their friend, they hire you. 
It is the exact reason why referrals work, right? I believe old Jim Bob over there, right? And Jim Bob said that XYZ is really good. I trust XYZ. That's why referrals work. Why do you think they work? It's because the trust is passed on. Now, trusting somebody, they will hire you for other services. They go, man, XYZ does great windows, but they also do gutter cleaning? I didn't know. I'm going to call them up, right? It's easy sell to stay in contact with them. It's also the same reason why McDonald's, every single person in the world, or at least this country, knows what McDonald's is from two years to 100 years. But yet they are on billboards and magazines and TVs and uh, everywhere, right? They have to stay relevant, and that's just a great way to do that. And it also allows you to take more money from each of your customers. Think about that. If you could increase your customers by 25 percent what they spend with you not raising prices but they would increase what they spend with you by 25 percent that would that would add 25 percent to your total gross that's crazy and it's easy it's all right there don't neglect them um, also get reviews from them now if a referral works you could get a referral by somebody else they don't even know that transfers trust also Referrals are now rated higher than actual, um, uh, I'm sorry, reviews are, revi- hey, how are you? <clears throat> reviews are rated higher in uh, making buying decisions than referrals even are now, which I don't believe that's statistic, but I guess it is a statistic. That's crazy, right? If, if 20 people say you did a good job, well, you must do a good job. If 20 people say you do a good job, but one says you do a bad job, oh, those reviews must be real. You can't please everybody. That's the power. That is the power of reviews. Getting reviews is very easy. Now, you can use uh, programs like... (sighs) Nice job. Can't believe I bummed on that one. That's an awesome program. They are the ones then in charge of getting those reviews for you. Real reviews, not buying them from India or whatever you're doing. Those people are, you give them your clients, they send over great emails and constantly just follow up with them saying, hey, I know you did service, I'd love for you to get your information, I was a, let's give it a review, and then they load them and get, it's a great service. But you can do that also on your own. Again, staying with those, make a 4 by 6 postcard to send out to everybody. If you don't want to do the uh, uh, envelope system, send out a postcard, send out an email, send out whatever. Email with links is amazing, right? Reviews are huge. Get them. You're not focusing on those customers if you don't do that review. Um, And uh, finally, get referrals from those people. Now, letting them know that you're looking for new business, you're looking for referrals, and you love if they could give you some, that's huge. That's huge. That's like you guys out there who buy from me. If you go and tell someone else, Oh, yeah, deal with Jersey. He's great, right? They are the referral. That is the person who is sent to me, and then, again, that trust transfers. Referrals and reviews are huge, but you have to contact those customers to get those. Those are very, very valuable. That customer is worth a ton of money that you have. If you have 250 customers right now, you have 250 potential uh upsells you have 250 potential referrals that's doubling your business size if everybody just referred you to one person it's crazy think of the power how do you utilize that how do you use a customer to help you grow your business completely doable but don't let it go to the wayside you'll you'll be pissed that you did um and the number one way um the top five mistakes in business Uh, The number one is uh, advertising when it's slow. This is the hardest one on here, but I put it at number one because it's the biggest, biggest money-saving anything that you will get. Here's what it is. A lot of people get to this time of year, uh, we're still not quite to it, but when they come to the time of year where things start slowing down, they go, gosh, we're so slow. Let's do a bunch of ads. Let's get some people in. Ads don't work. What are they? Oh, let's do 50, 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Let's do half price, 50% if they book right now. These people are panicking. So not only are they creating a culture of crappy deals, they're racing to the bottom, right? They're also advertising to people who don't want it. No matter the deal, they don't want it. It's not in their brains, 
right? If you right now, you just ate a big steak dinner and I show you the best looking cheeseburger ever and I'm like, you can buy this cheeseburger. It's normally $19.99. It's delicious. Comes with fries. Mm, it's good for $1. You can buy it right now for $1. You go, thanks, I just ate. You don't want it. You don't want it. It could be the best looking burger, the cheapest burger. It could be, they don't want it. So you advertising to somebody at that time is a complete waste of time. It's a complete waste of money. The thing is, you have to plan all year for winter. You have to. We are squirrels. You have to save money for the winter. It just is what it is. If you don't, that's when panic strikes. And even the money you do have in savings or that you've kind of set aside or squirreled aside, you go and spend it all on advertising. It's not going to repay your yields. It's going to create a culture of low uh, pricing and it's just not good. That doesn't help anybody, especially not you. Using up all that, that good uh, cheddar for, for uh, advertising doesn't work. If it's not in people's brain, it's not going to sell. Like if they don't think of it, you can remind somebody if it's subliminally already in there. Why is spring and fall busy? It's busy for everybody. And no, all thousand of your customers aren't talking to each other going, oh, I think I'm going to call in uh, March. But it is in their brains because spring happens, things are greening. Oh, wow, there's buds on the tree. There's leaves. I Look at the blue sky. Oh, my windows are dirty. It's in their brains. If it's in their brains, it can be advertised to. It can be, it's the reason that gum is in the checkout aisle at a store or you're at a gas station. It's right there. No one goes in to buy that, but they may be thinking like, oh man, my breath is gnarly. Go and do something and they see gum and they're like, oh, it's reminded them, them of something they've already thought of. Nobody's seen gum and went, whoa, that looks delicious. I got to get me some of that, right? They just are reminded that they need it. It's got to be in people's brains. Advertising when you're slow, it's not in their brains. It's, it's slow for a reason. It's not in anybody's brains, right? And you have to plan on the financial hardship. That is the hardest part about not advertising is because when it's slow, that's your panic defense. We got to get people in there. We got to get, but advertising does not work like that. You know, it does not work. If you just bought a car 100 miles ago and I'll give you an oil change for four bucks, you're not going to do it because you don't need an oil change. That's what it is. No matter what the deal is, it's got to be in people's brain. But you have to plan for that. If you can plan right now, if you're listening to this and watching this, if you can be as tight as possible for the next month, You'll have the money through winter. Yes, you're still going to do some things in winter. And you can still do free advertising just to keep relevant and stay out there. But there's no need to pay for advertising. It's not going to work anyway. Yeah. Anyway, there is the uh, top five uh, business mistakes in the window cleaning world. If you have a show idea, go to YouTube. Search this video. WCR Nation, episode 72, top five, something like that. You'll find it. Top five business mistakes. Search that. That'll be the name. And go ahead and post on there what your idea is. Or shoot it to me directly. Josh at window cleaning resource. Or text it to me. 862-312-2026. Uh, also, if you want to buy supplies and would love to make my day, give me a call. Uh, 862-312-2026. Like I said, you can text that. Call it. It's a cell phone. Um, either way, yeah. Those are the top five. Give me some more ideas. Let's make this happen. We'll get some uh, good shows here through the winter. And uh, go out there and be epic. Oh, actually, I'm not even going to end the show there because I didn't give you a 5% code. If you're still listening and you want to get 5% off your order, call me, let me know, and uh, uh, tell me I am a squirrel. That is your deal. Uh, go ahead and uh, text me, email me, call me, let me know, and you'll get 5% off your order. If you tell me that, let me put the order. Cool? All right. Now... Go out there and be epic. <laughs>